Well, y'all, this is going to be CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, um, Giant Hog. And I mean giant. He is a four or five-year-old. And um, I started smelling, because there's still quite a bit. There's hair here. There's, um, of course, here's the better part of the body. And I can tell you right now, just looking at the size of the hooves. And um, this was a hog in the 300-pound range. Maybe even a smidgen more. And I found enough of them to be able to half be able to say that so when I came over here initially actually I picked up I think what happened is it doesn't smell the greatest here I, I started smelling it about 100 yards that way which is to the northwest and I knew that we had a southeast wind I knew there was a southeast wind it's just the way the weather patterns here in Houston are and uh, so I knew hey it's southeast so I started going southeast and boom and actually what I think happened was part of this has been hit by a heavy piece of equipment because there's all this developers have torn up all this over here now the yotes have come in here and eaten almost everything but this thing this skull has been split in two I think it got run over now here's where it gets really interesting and I just pulled this one piece out this is probably the largest cutter I personally have ever held and I've got some giant gigantic ones in my trophy room so that is huge and you know I normally I'd take the whole skull but in this case the bottom jaw has been split in two and this is what it looks like there's the wetter and that's a I mean, that is a five or six year old I'll give you a little education now that scat right there I think it's bobcats, but I'm not positive. That's scat. It's right here, too. It's not coyote. I think it's bobcat scat. I think bobcat's been in here munching, too. Pretty sure that's bobcat scat. It, uh, just imagine a really large cat turd with hair in it. And I think that's what that is. I think. Anyway, um, and anyone who's like, oh, my God, that's a coyote turd. Or a fox could be, I don't know, but I, I think that's a bobcat. Anyway, take a look at this cutter. That is dangerous. That is a, that's a knife. And uh, let's look at the skull. And I'll crack this open and just take the cutters and wetters. But there's your skull, okay? Now, to give you an idea how big this is, I don't know how to tell you how big it is. Uh, here's my five shot 38. My little, my little Taurus Poly. And there's a five shot 38 next to that. So that gives you an idea of scale, how big it is. And here is my cool Swedish hunting knife. This is eight inches long. So there's an eight inch, eight inch blade. So you're looking at close to 14, 15 inches long, roughly. So, um, love that knife, by the way. You can get them at uh, Bass Pro Shops. Only place I've ever seen them. Made in Sweden. Awesome stuff. Um, and I normally don't buy anything that isn't made in America for knives, but I was like, okay, my ancestors came from there. Okay, I can buy Swedish. Okay. So, uh, yeah, don't leave the pistol right around. And so, for those of you who are Taurus haters, and I could care less. The, the reason I carry this polymer, it's a polymer pistol, polymer revolver, is it's so dang light. And, you know, I just felt a Smith & Wesson snob say the obvious. Oh, well, just get an airway. Yeah. Well, just get $700 to get an airway when you're done. Uh-huh. And this, I can get for $299 on sale, $350. Yeah. So anyway, and it's reliable and, you know, I like it. So I used to have a, the same pistol polymer in a judge, and it's at the bottom of a river. Don't even try to. That's the one negative about a pistol like this. There is very little magnetic signature in this gun. 
Um, it's there, but not a whole lot. Um, so, you know, the barrel is stainless and the body is made of polymer and there are some ferrous metal parts on the inside. But if you want to go magnet fishing, you might have a tough time with this one. <laughs> and actually, if with an air weight, that thing is made of aluminum and titanium and alloys. Yeah, I don't. I doubt it has much of an magnetic signature at all. You're, you just, yeah. And you, my judge is, there's been several uh, hundred year floods. There's been three hundred year plus floods in the last four years. So, uh, yeah, go figure. Climate change deniers, there's something going on there. There's some other factors that are environmental. Sand mines have uh, silted up the lake and they have uh, made it much more likely to flood. In fact, Lake Houston now holds half the amount of the water it held when it was built in 1954, 55. Half. So they're going to have to uh, do something, most likely dredge it. And um, it is what it is. Anyway, I digress. There's that nasty smelling hide. And for those of you who don't know anything about a boar hide, man, everything else could be eaten in that stupid hide. That's why they make footballs. Out. You ever wondered why a football is made of pigskin? You're like, why, why do they make a pigskin? I'm telling you, look at that. Everything else been tore up, run over by a bulldozer. And there the hooks, the skin's almost all intact. And one big nasty, it's got, oh, it's got uh, gnats and maggots. And, oh. Anyway, we're gonna, I'll go ahead and salvage these. And there's the big tufts of hair. Boy, you can smell it. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I'll just give you a quick look around. Some, uh, I'm kind of curious about this development because the area I'm on is flood control stuff. But that, obviously not. And with all the floods, I'm curious how they got a permit to do that. Now I'm all about making money in business. Okay, I'm good. But how they got a permit, unless they're going to build right now, the new, um, they may be doing it because there's a new county ordinance and city ordinance that's going to make all new developments have to build two feet. Within the city of Houston, it has to be two feet above the 500 year plane. It used to be the 100 year plane. Of course, the 100 year plane is not the 100 year plane anymore. So now they may build this up. They just might do it. We'll see. Or maybe they were able to do it in time and get grandfathered. I don't know. But either way, I have a sneaking suspicion. And then, man, check that bone out. It's, it's huge. It's really big. Uh, and, of course, you know, the coyotes and, and foxes. Everyone's going to come along and get their feed, like what I think was Bobcat. scat back there. Everyone's, everything's going to come and get its feed. And like a Bobcat, what he did there probably was a Bobcat. Because Bobcats have this really neat, not neat habit of... Um, Pooing and then they'll mark their territory by pooing and then peeing on it. And they do that all the time. I have experienced it quite a bit. They do it right up into the asphalt, too. So, anyway, we're going to go ahead and sign off. I'm going to clean those pieces up. They're awesome. Wish I get the whole skull, but I mean, why? Got run over by a piece of heavy equipment. Anyway, I'm going to keep shiv hunting now. We've got 30 more minutes of daylight, so. I'll talk to y'all later. I, earlier, I found another coyote or another three-year-old boar head. Couldn't find jaw, and uh, I know where it is. I put it in a bag, put it near the road, and I go get it. Could not find the jaw, but you know what? The universe was like, "Keep going, dude." You know, and I did, and I have uh, I've done pretty dang well here. So, anyway, this is a long video. So here's a giant boar skull 101, and a little bit of environmental rant. And before anybody calls me one thing or the other, look, <clears throat> I own over a hundred sword staggers, bayonets, knives, blades. I collect antique arms, and I probably am up to 36 guns. So I am a dyed-in-the-wool libertarian. Leave me alone, and uh, let me do what I want to do, and I'll let you do what you want to do. And I don't really don't care what you do. Do whatever you want to do. So I don't fall into any of that political mess. And uh, really stay away from both extremes because they call me the other extreme all the time. And talking about annoying, that's annoying. So, uh, 
God bless all my friends. And I got friends from all spectrums. I just don't talk politics, really. Because they're like, well, what? They're, you're, you're confused. I said, no, I'm not confused. I believe what I believe. Some of what I believe will jive with you, and some will not. That doesn't make me the Antichrist. It just means we don't agree. So let's go drink some beer. I'm good to go. Anyway, all right, I'm going to let y'all go. And uh, there's your last view. Look at that. And actually, I'm going to go toss them off in the woods after I harvest the giant wetter right there and that cutter. Yeah. All right. Talk to y'all later. Y'all have a fine one. Bye now.